I'm Tim Duru, and this is my place analysis presentation for GSP 240. My location is Norway, and my subject is monarchy. So Norway is, of course, a country in Europe. There are four physiographic regions in Europe. Uh, these regions are distinct areas identified by similar geology and vegetation. Norway is in the northwestern uplands region, uh, which you can see pictured here in yellow. This region uh, contains Iceland and northern parts of the British Isles, as well as the, as the uh, Scandinavian peninsula. Norway also has fjords. It's well known for its fjords because they produce incredible scenery. These fjords are large mountain ranges that have been carved out by glaciers across the centuries. Typically, fjords have three sides uh, that are steep mountain ranges and one side that opens up to a greater body of water. Norway is also a monarchy. Monarchy was the leading form of government in Europe until its decline in the 17th century when countries began operating primarily as republics instead. These are the monarchies uh, that are currently present in modern day Europe. There are currently seven kingdoms in Europe, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, the UK, Spain, the Netherlands, and Belgium. You may recognize Queen Elizabeth of the UK, but you probably don't recognize King Harold V of Norway. King Harold and Queen Elizabeth are actually second cousins. This is their shared grandfather, King Edward VII, who was king of the UK from 1901 to 1910. So, how have these monarchies survived through the periods of industrialization and global war that have characterized the last century? Let's take Norway as an example and begin with King Hakan VII. Hakan was elected King of Norway by popular vote in 1905. He reigned as king during both world wars. Norway was able to remain neutral during World War I, but was occupied by Nazi forces during World War II. Upon Nazi invasion in 1940, the Norwegian royal family fled the capital of their country. Days after the invasion, King Hakan faced pressures to submit to German demands by appointing a fascist prime minister over Norway. Hakan courageously stood his ground and refused the German demands. Hakan's stand against the Germans inspired the Norwegian parliament to also resist German governments in the country. Hakan lived in exile for five years, but returned in 1945 after German defeat. This is King Hakan's only child, Prince Alexander of Denmark. After his father's death in 1957, Alexander assumed the Norwegian throne and assumed the name Olaf V. He was known as the People's King because of incredible because of his incredible popularity. There's a story where uh, Norway <clears throat> Norway was having an energy crisis, and they got rid of all of their. You weren't allowed to drive in your car on the roads, so King Olaf would have been exempt from this rule, uh, but instead he decided to be one of the people and abide by this rule. And he was seen by newspaper reporters boarding onto a train with his skis along with everybody else to go skiing that day. This is King Olaf's son, King Harold V. So King Harold V assumed the throne uh, after his father's death in 1991. He still reigns over Norway today. And going back a little bit, this is that same man, King Harold, but this is now Prince Harold in 1943. He was just a young boy during the Nazi occupation of Norway. His father Olaf and his grandfather Hakan can be seen here living in London during World War II to support the war effort. Meanwhile, King Harold and his mother and siblings were in shelter in Washington, D.C. He returned with his family, you can see him here on the left, uh, in 1945 after German defeat, just in time for him to attend the third grade in a Norwegian public school. 
Harold was Prince of Norway for his entire early adult life. He attended Oxford, and he married a commoner woman against his father's wishes. In his youth, he competed in Olympic yachting events. This is him in 1980. Harold attended many Olympic Games since. Just recently, Harold celebrated 30 years on the throne this January. Like many modern monarchies, his duties in government are mostly symbolic. He meets with the Norwegian Prime Minister on a weekly basis, and he formally opens Norwegian Parliament once a year in October. Thank you for watching.